All right, this is your notes for 5-1. Notes, 5-1 factors. Okay, first things first. First things first, whenever we are factoring, the things that will keep you out of trouble will be if you follow simple steps going along the way. And the first step you should ask on anything, no matter which method we end up using, and there could be multiple methods that we use moving forward, I'm going to see what works best for you guys, and then we'll go with it. But all methods require you to do this first step. The first step is to look at the information given and go, is there any way to reduce it? Is there anything I can divide out of it evenly to make it smaller? Okay, that'll save you stress down the line as far as when we get to total factoring. So right now, uh, we're just looking for greatest common factors. I, I look at the numbers first. I have a 3 and a 6. Is there something that will go into both 3 and 6? Three. 3. Okay, so I'll write that down. The next thing I look for is my variables. Do they have, don't worry about the exponent yet. Do they have a variable in common? Yes, they both have an x. Okay, now the biggest x I can divide out is the smallest x. When I talk about biggest and smallest, I'm talking about the exponent. Okay, this has an exponent of two. If there's nothing there, that means it's an exponent of what? One, and if you need to put the one there to feel warm and fuzzy, you can put the one there. So the biggest I can take out is the smallest it has to offer. Okay, so we, remember in math, whatever you do to one thing, you have to do to everything. So I can't say I'm going to take two out because he doesn't have two to give. Okay, so I want to take as much out as I can, but it has to have it to give. So now we close that. What is the rule? For division, okay, first off, our numbers, we just divide the numbers, yes? The whole numbers? Mm -hmm. 3 divided by 3 is 1. You don't have to put the 1, but when we get to exponents, what is the rule for exponents and division? What do we do with the exponents? Subtract them. Good. Okay, so 3 divided by 3, they just cancel off for the 1, whichever you want to say. And then the x's, I had 2, and I'm talking exponents. I had 2, I took 1 away, that leaves me what? 2 minus one. 1. 1. So I had 1 left. Okay, that's an exponent of 1. 6 divided by 3 is? 2. 2. I had 1. I took it away. He gone. That's it. That's all. Okay? So that's it. So I looked at the numbers first. And I said, what is the biggest number? They'll go into 3 and 6. And we said 3. We'll go into both of those. Then we looked and we said, okay, do they have a variable in common? And they both had an x. So we put an x down. Then we said, all right, what's the biggest exponent I can take out? And that would be 1 because that's all he has to give. I can't take out more than 1 because he doesn't have more than 1. And then I just divide it back into both of those. 3x squared divided by 3x is 1x. 6x divided by 3x is 2. Okay, I divided the whole numbers, subtracted exponents. So if I get to this guy, 25 and 30, what's the biggest thing I can take out of 25 and 30? 5. Do they both have a variable in common? Yes, yes they both have a y. And I want to get as many of the y out as I can, so what's the biggest exponent that I can take out? Two, because that's all he has to give. I can't take out three, because he don't have three. Okay, so here we go. Divide it back in. 25y to the third divided by 5y squared. So 25 divided by 5 is? 5. I had three here. I took two away. That left me? There's 5y or 1 there. Negative 30 divided by 5 six. is 6. I had two y's. I took them both away. They gone. So that's just your answer like that. That's just the answer right there. That is factoring or finding the GCF. Okay? Now, the next rule is if you see a negative, don't freak out because there's three of them here, a trinomial. If I see a negative out front, I have to take that. We cannot have a lead coefficient, the number in front, being a negative. 
So I'm automatically, no matter if anything else will divide through them, I can always divide a negative one out. So I'm gonna put my negative down. However, I look at the numbers six, four, and eight. What will go into all of those? Two. Two. Okay, now I look for variables. Do they all have a variable in common? No. No, eight doesn't have anything. So I can't take out any X's. So the X's are gonna stay exactly like they are. Negative six X divided by two. Is there another way to do this, like a box with? No, that's whenever you get to the actual factoring part. There's a box. Okay, so I have negative six, Divided by negative 2 is 3. And because I didn't take any x's out, I have to put the x to the third back. And then I have negative 4x squared divided by negative 2. So what's negative 4 divided by negative 2? Two? 2. And then my x squared. 8 divided by negative 2. Negative 4. Done. And finally on these types, I see what on number four? First thing that steps out? A negative. So I've got to throw that down. Now, 6, 15, and 11. Is there a number to go into all of those? No. Because nothing will go into 11 except for one. Okay, so I know one. Is there a variable that goes in all of them? No. So all I can do is divide everything by negative one. All I do when I divide by negative one is do what to the signs? Just change them. So just change all the signs at 6x squared, negative 15x, and a negative 11. That's it. That's all. That one's done. So it's just yes, it's basically dividing. The outside number is like you're dividing the top numbers? Yes. The whole number is divided into whole numbers. The exponents, you, you subtract exponents on division. Okay, next one. We get down to these kind. Okay, so you get to this and you see difference. In grade school, you learn difference means subtract, yes? Okay, so I first I look for that. Is there a subtraction? Yes. Next thing I look for is I look at these two guys and I go, are they perfect squares? Perfect square means, is there a number times itself, so identical, that would give me that? So, is, is there something times itself that gives me x squared? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I break this guy into two. And because it is subtraction, what do I, when I'm doing multiplication, what do I have to have to get a minus number? One has to be a what and one has to be a what? A positive and then a negative. negative. So I throw those down right now. Boom. And what you said yes to this, so what times itself is x squared? X times x. X times x. So I put those at the front of the bus. Then, what times itself is 9? 3. 3. three. Okay? It has the exact same number. So 3 times 3. Now, let's say you didn't know that. You could always take your calculator and you could go control x squared, which gives you square root of 9, hit enter, and it tells you 3, which just means that 3 times itself gives you that number. Okay? Let's look at the next one. Is it a difference? Yes. Is that a perfect square? Meaning, is there a number times itself that'll give you a 4? Yes. 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 You already said there's a number times itself to give you x squared. And therefore, must be a number times itself to get y squared. So here we go. Break it into 2. What times itself is 4? 2. 2. What times itself is x squared? Okay, one's got to be plus, one's got to be minus. What times itself is y squared? Y? Yep. That's it. That's all that's done. Look at it, number seven. First off, is it a difference? Because the rest doesn't matter if it's not. Yes, it is. Can I reduce it? Meaning, can I divide something into both of them equally? Yes. 
Well, like meaning the oh, same no. number. No. No? no. So then you go to the, the yes that you were answering, which is, is that a perfect square? Yes. Is that a perfect square? Yes. Is that a perfect square? Yes. So on and so forth. So now we break it into two. What times itself is 25? Five. Five. What times itself is x squared? One's plus, one's minus. Doesn't matter which one you put. You can put minus here and plus there. It's the same thing. What times itself is 49? Seven. Seven. And then what times itself is y squared? Okay. Then we move to number eight. Yes, it's a difference. Can I divide anything into both of them? No. Are they perfect squares? Is that a perfect square? Anything times itself, no, give no. me five. No. So that means this guy would be prime. There's nothing I can do to it. I can't divide anything out of it. I can't perform difference of squares. Nothing I can do. Number nine. What's the first thing that pops out to you? It's a plus, it's not a difference. Okay, even though that's a perfect square and that's a perfect square, it won't work. I can't divide anything out of it, so that means it is prime. Now, someone earlier said, well, coach, what if you had put x plus three and x plus three? Okay, you don't have to write this down, but I'm going to show you why that does not work if it is a plus there. X plus three and X plus three. Okay, when I use FOIL, X times X is? X times three is? And in the inside, three times X is? And three times three is? Which ones are like terms? The ones in the middle, yes? Okay, so it would be x squared plus 6x plus 9. Would we agree? Yes. That is not what we said in the beginning. Okay, so this is not that. You can't do it if it is a plus or a sum. Okay? Look at it, number 10. You go, is there anything I can divide out evenly? Nothing I can think of. I can't divide two through there, five, nothing like that, three. Okay, so you're going, you're jumping straight to the perfect squares, yes? So he's saying it's a difference, and this is a perfect square. And that's a perfect square. So he's flying right to it. He said square root of 169 is? 13. Okay, what times itself is x squared? And one's plus, one's minus. What times itself is 100? And done. Flip it. Okay. All right, now. If the number in front is a 1, the lead coefficient's a 1, okay? You still have to ask yourself, is there anything I can divide into all of them to reduce it? The answer would be no. So the lead coefficient is a 1. We could jump right to our answer. We do two sets of parentheses. You already told me what times itself is x squared. So that goes at the front of the bus. Now here's where we find out the rest. You gotta go what multiplies to give me the end and adds or subtracts to give me the middle. So what I like to do is take the end and put it over to the side and circle it. And I start going through all my multiples of 36. I wanna know what multiplies to give me positive 36, but will add or subtract to give me 15. So 1 times 36, that ain't going to get me to 15. Okay, what else? 3 and 13, right? No, 3 and 12? 3 and 12, will that get me to 15? Yeah, that'll get me there. A positive 3 and a positive 12 is 36. A positive 3 and a positive 12 is 15. 
buckets. Yes, if you know the box method, you can use the box method. Yeah. If you like the box one, there's a way of doing it with a box thing. You can do it. So you're gonna do the next one with the box method, him and him, you and you, and then and we're, I'm gonna do it the long one this way. Okay. Or no, I wouldn't call it long. It's just like that. Thanks. Okay. This guy here, nothing I can divide out, so I jump right to my answer. What times itself is x squared? We already said x. Now we gotta go what multiplies to give me the n, which is positive 14, and combines to give me negative nine. So what multiplies to give me 14? I don't remember it all. I haven't done it so long. I don't know. I know, I don't know. It was so fun to do it. Yeah, I know. It was what multiplies to give me 14? <laughs> One and 14, but that won't get me a nine. Two and seven. So I know it has to be two and a seven. And I need a positive 14, so they both must be positive or they both must be negative, yes? So what would they be? Both positive or both negative? To get negative nine. Both negative, yes. Negative two and a negative seven. Okay. All right, next one, anything here to divide out? No? Okay, so I now, I jump to it. X and X, and I got negative 22. We want to know what multiplies to give me negative 22, combines to give me nine. What multiplies to give me negative 22, but will combine to give me nine. What multiplies to give me negative 22? 1 and 22, right? 1 and negative 22, or negative 1 and positive 22. Neither one of those will get me to that. So what else will multiply to get me 22? 11 and 2. One of them's got to be a negative. So if I put the negative with the 11, when I combine those, that's negative 11 and positive 2, which would be a negative 9. So that won't work, but I can just simply flip the sign, yes? Make that guy a negative, him a positive. And then that gives me 11 minus 2, which is 9. Okay. Next up, same deal. Anything I can divide evenly through all of them? The answer is no, so I jump to my answer. X and X. I want to know what multiplies to give me negative 14. So I know one's got to be a positive and one's got to be a negative. It's the only way to get a negative when you multiply. And I need to add or subtract to get negative 5. So what multiplies to give me negative 14? 2 and 7. Okay, one of them has to be a negative. So which one's going to be a negative? Give me a negative 5. Negative 7. Good. Okay. Now we jump down to 15. This is where it becomes extremely important because regardless if you're using the box method or you're using a magic number method or using whatever, you must be able to reduce it before you do it. Otherwise, you're going to be dealing with crazy big numbers and it's going to throw your stuff off, whichever method you choose to use. Okay. Looking at it, as a lead coefficient greater than one. So I go, can I divide anything into all of these to get it smaller? And the answer is? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What number goes in all of those? Three. Three. Do they all have a variable in common? No. No, because 45 doesn't have an x. So I'm going to divide everything by three. When I divide by three, that becomes x squared. When I divide 24x by three, that gives me 8x. When I divide 45 by 3, that gives me 15. Now I'm right back to where we were at the top. Bring the 3 down. Break this guy down into two segments. To get x squared, you already told me, is x and x. Now I need to multiply to get 15. A positive 15 combined to get a positive 8. So the only way to multiply and get a positive 15 is both of them must be positive or both of them must be negative. So what numbers multiply give me 15? 3, 5. 3 and 5. 
Okay, in order to get a positive 8, what must signs the, these have? Positive. Both positive. Done. Okay, keep it on trucking. First thing I see wrong with number 16 is what? It's a negative. A negative out front. Can't have it. Write it down. Next thing I look for is can I divide a number through all these and to reduce, to reduce it? Yeah, five. Next thing I look for is do they all have a variable in common? Yes. Yes, they all have an x. And the largest x I can take out is to what power? One power, because that's all he has. So I divide it back in. Negative 5x to the third divided by negative 5x leaves me 1x one one x squared, or just x squared. Okay, 50x squared divided by negative 5x. 50 divided by negative 5 is negative 10. I had 2, I took 1 away, so it left me 1. Now, negative 120 divided by negative 5. A negative divided by negative is a positive. And 120 divided by 5 is 24. I had an x, but I took it away. He gone. And now we're right back to what we did up top. Bring down your negative 5x. Break this guy down into two groups. To get the x squared, I put it in the front. What multiplies to give me a positive 24, but will combine to give me negative 10. Again, in order to multiply to get a positive 24, they both have to be positive or they both have to be negative. 12 and 2, good. Let's go with it. 12 and 2, and you want them to both be what? So, Because if I put both of these guys as negative, that would give me positive 24, but if I combine them, that's negative 14. Okay, so 6 and 4, but I need them to come out to negative 10, so they both need to be what? Negative. Negative 6 and a negative 4. <clears throat> okay, next one. I look at them and go, okay, can I reduce these? Is there anything I can divide into both of them? I see that they end in a 5 and a 0, so that tells me right there what goes into anything that ends in 5 and 0. 5. Okay, so I'm going to take out 5. Do they both have a variable in common? No. No. 125 divided by 5 is? 25, and I didn't mess with the exponent, so x squared, minus 80 divided by 5? 16. 16. And I look at it and go, okay, wait a second, that is a difference. Is that a perfect square? Yeah. Perfect square? Perfect square? Yes. Okay, so we got to go one more step. Make two sets. What times itself is 25. What times itself is x squared? Six. One's got to be plus, one's got to be minus. What times itself is 16? Four. Done. And finally, 18. What's the first thing you see wrong with it? Negative. Negative. Got to put that down. Is there a number that will go into both of them? Three. Three. How about a variable? Yes, x. Yes, x. And what's the biggest exponent I can take out? Two. Two. So negative 3, those cancel off. I have 3, I have 2, so that leaves me 1. Minus, oh, not really minus, now is it? Negative 12 divided by negative 3 is? 4. 4, a positive 4. I had 2, took them both away. There you go. We did A, 5, dash, 1. We did numbers. 1, 3, 4, 8, 1, 3, 4, 8, 13, 19, and 20. When you're done, turn a man up here on my desk. If you have questions, I'm here for you for that. This concludes the notes for 5 1. Yes. Why did we take the whole period to this today? Coach in.